All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here. This is Diplomacy in Asia. This is for our unit Becoming a World Power. So objectives and standards, uh, you will be able to understand how the United States became involved in Asian affairs, and you will be able to analyze how the United States expanded in world power. And take a moment there to look over the standards, please. I'm doing my best here to draw a circle, so I apologize for that. Take a look at them. And our desired result, what role did the United States play in Asia? So increasing influence. The United States was a major world power in Asia by 1899. Sorry about that. American naval bases were across the Pacific, so the United States could operate from anywhere in East Asia. Now trade. Trade was the goal of the United States in Asia, not conquest. So while other, Euro uh, while other European countries are expanding for uh, political reasons, religious reasons, uh, territory and land goals, um, the United States is mainly expanding for trade purposes, okay? Um, one of the big areas is China, and exports to China grew between 1895 <coughs> excuse me, and 1900. Now, many Chinese did not buy American products, um, but the United States is still increasing its presence there. Uh, American business leaders were excited about the new markets, especially in steel, textiles, and oil. So here we see the United States in orange there. That's Alaska up there. Um, and then over here is China, the big green area. So just to kind of show you, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> how they are <coughs> related in world affairs. Okay, open door policy. The United States was not the only country that had interest in China. Germany, France, Great Britain, and Russia also wanted trading rights in the Asian country. And these countries began to uh, div div uh, excuse me, divide up China into different regions of control, known as spheres of influence. So American politicians and businessmen worried that they would soon be pushed out of China since China's kind of being divided up between all these different countries. So to kind of resolve this, Secretary of State John Hay, who you see here, top picture here, and President William McKinley, bottom picture down here, um, both supported an open door policy, okay, an open door uh, policy. I'm trying to get my check mark here so you can see that. There we go. Um, and this allowed all countries to trade with China in the different spheres. So that means that if Germany had control of a certain part of China, the United States, England, France, they could trade there as well. And same could be said for Germany. Germany could trade in different regions as well. So instead of kind of roping off or blocking off these regions to different countries, everybody could trade in different areas of China and not kind of be limited to their own area. John Hay asked other countries to allow trade opportunities in their spheres of influence in China, like we were just talking about, which they agreed to. So this kind of opens up again trade um, in China for all countries, including the U.S. So you can see those two pictures are the two circles I corrected there. So rebellion in China. Uh, Chinese secret societies began to rebel against foreign influence, and the Society of Righteous and Harmonious Fist, uh, more commonly known as the Boxers because of their martial arts fighting styles, believed foreign influence was damaging China. And in 1899, the Boxer Rebellion began in China with attacks and murders of foreigners and Chinese Christians as well. They even attacked their own people who were converting to um, Christianity as well. You can kind of see a picture here of the Boxers there as well. Uh, other nations, including the United States, decided to take action because they obviously didn't want their you know, citizens living abroad. Um, or other Chinese Christians being attacked for their views. Um, so many different countries, the United States, France, Germany, um, England, they all get together and they used military force to rescue foreigners and to end uh, the Chinese rebellion, uh, excuse me, the Boxer Rebellion. It lasted about maybe about a year or so, um, maybe a little less than a year. So it wasn't a long rebellion, but again, um, still had an impact on foreign influence and um, China as well. Okay, so closure. What role did the United States play in Asia? Think about some of the different things we've talked about. Um, American goals in um, East Asia, such as trade and things like that, especially in China. Think about the open door policy and think about the Boxer Rebellion, and that'll help you answer your questions. Um, try your best on the questions that follow, and please let me know if you have any questions or concerns, and I uh, hope to talk to you all soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.